Hey what's up guys welcome back you are watching Furutech who already reviewed lots of custom roms for nothing phone one actually most of us heard about all the custom roms once in their life but today we are going to review another new rom called as alpha droid flashing of this rom is same as we did for previous roms please check the video link given under the video description to flash this build I already did the clean flashing of rom and phone started to boot into this new alpha droid boot animation this ROM has some amazing and unique customization that we will discuss in the customizations timestamp of the video. But today we will thoroughly review the ROM like its support phone details, its performance, UI bench jitter and screen touch sampling rate. We did the complete review of all the customizations and at the last I showed some bugs in the ROM with my final verdict. So watch the video till the end. Now without further ado, let's get started. On the new adventure. We did the clean flashing so phone booted with the setup. After completing the setup, this is a stock alpha launcher with their own alpha wallpapers. We we'll get some set of alpha droid wallpapers pre-installed. You can check them with the review of this ROM. Let's jump to the about phone now. Setting US seems something different as compared to the other custom ROMs. In the Android version tab, we we'll get the ROM signature logo alpha at the top of the setting. This is the same Android 13 base ROM with the material clock history. Security patch is of May 2023. Kernel is enforcing. ROM version is Alpha Droid 1.5.1. Build date of ROM is 20th May 2023, but the ROM was released on the 27th May. Kernel version is 5.4.233 Pixis Plus. Build date with the Google Client Tool Chain 14. So developers released the first build of this ROM with all the latest sources. Now let's start with our next timestamp of the video that is performance. In one word I can say this ROM is buttery smooth. If you are already coming from another custom ROM then nowadays all the ROMs has the same level of performance. Everything is blazing fast like apps opening, closing, switching between applications, scrolling, swiping etc. Screen has by default adaptive screen refresh rate, its maximum 120Hz and minimum 60Hz. If you enable the force FPS using the developer setting, all the applications will run on the 120Hz only. But camera application will work on the lowest screen refresh rate of 60. We will also do the RAM management of the ROM. For that, we will open some applications as you can check on the screen and keep them in the background and we will see if they remain in the background or not after Geekbench 6 test. We ran the first test without the performance mode of the ROM because ROM comes with the performance mode option available under the battery setting and it's working. So after running the Geekbench 6 test, we got the score of 1026 and 2789 for single and multi-core respectively. This is the second top score till the date I got. First top ranking ROM is Paranoid Android. But that is our vanilla build while this ROM is highly customizable. Next we did the GP performance testing and we got the score of 2077 and for Hulkan graphics we got the score of 2332 which is slightly lower as compared to the other custom ROMs. Next to enable the performance mode option available under the battery setting of the phone. Let's see if this setting really makes any difference or not. For CPU performance now we got the score of 968 and 2860. Performance mode really did its magic and ROM ranked at the first position in the performance score. Similarly, for GPU performance testing for OpenGL and Hukong graphics, we got the score of 2126 and 2453 respectively. Here again, performance mode has did really good improvement in the scores. So it's confirmed that performance mode setting is really improving the performance and ROM will rank first position along with the paranoid Android with the same scores. Now let's check out the applications are they are still running in the background. First one is the Google application and it's running so check. Music application is running, check. Google Chrome running, check. YouTube and video playback is working, check. Google Photos is also available, check. And lastly, Share Me application is also available, check. So almost all the applications are running in the background even after 30 minutes of CPU intensive Geekbench days. So we can confirm that the RAM management is also very good in the ROM. Overall, ROM is pretty decent performer numerically and in the real life world uses. Next we did the new test called as the screen touch sampling rate. 
more the touch sampling more responsive will be the screen and more accurate will be the touch detection this is especially useful for the action gamings like the pubg where faster activities needs to overcome the opponents download and install a touch sampling rate application its link is given under the video description open it and now move your finger on the screen on the left who gets the input rates and on the right who gets the output rates here we got the constant 250 hertz screen touch sampling output rate which is very good because some stock roms are just giving 125 hertz of screen touch sampling rate so gaming will definitely better in this rom as per this results next we did the ui ben jitter testing less the jitter value more will be the scrolling swiping and in app user experience performance open the application and tap on the rendering and then tap on jitter it's didn't given me the good result when i tried to use some applications in the background while for ideal mode it's given the constant good results below 0.5 millisecond if you try to run some application jitter value suddenly rises about 2 millisecond but visibly rom is performing very good without any scrolling or in app user experience lag now it's time to show you the basic functions are working or not i will just tell you the information here what's working to avoid lengthy video Wi-Fi and Wi-Fi hotspot, Bluetooth with the HD or the codex, NFC, GPS locations, all are working fine. ROM supports the stable 5G connection with the Wi-Fi calling. It has 480 carrier aggregation toggle also. All the incoming and outgoing calls are working. Call recording is working in the dialer and who gets the recorded calls under the call lock section. Fingerprint and face unlock both are working and they are blazing fast. All the sensors are working like the gyroscope, light, proximity, magnetometer, compass, etc. Some other things like ear proximity, microphone, ear speaker, display, multi-touch, all are working fine without any issues. The most important requirement to run the banking application is safety net, it's passing, so we can run all the banking applications. Device storage is encrypted as kernel is enforcing which is necessary for data safety of stolen devices. Now let's check out the signature feature of Nothing Phone 1 that is Glyph Lite. ROM has the same Glyph features like Nothing OS. It has the Flip to Glyph, Glyph Brightness Slider, Call Animation, Notification Animation, Battery Level Indicator Setting. It also comes with the Music Visualizer that is not available in the stock Nothing OS. But if we enable the Music Visualizer, other features will get disabled. This music visualizer will create the disco light effect of the glyph light when any media sounds were played on mobile. Flip to glyph feature is working good without any delay issues. Core animations has bunch of different animation effect without any ringtones. These are just the glyph animation presets which are not synchronized with the stock ringtones of the ROM. But they are working properly with the incoming call animations. Similarly for the notification who gets the bunch of different presets who can able to disable the glyph light animations for specific application using these toggles. All the animations for any types of notifications are working good. Battery level glyph notification has some issues that we will discuss in the bug section of the video. Now let's check out the camera. ROM has the nothing camera inbuilt. Photo mode has all working wide angle camera modes, but the portrait mode for the both the front selfie and main camera has issues. Camera getting forced close with the portrait shot for main camera and for selfie camera didn't save the pictures in the memory. Video shooting also has some issues like only 180p video shooting is working with the HDR mode. Camera has working stabilization mode, but camcorder light is not working. It doesn't blinking while video recording. Normal flash is working but glyph flash setting didn't working but who gets the glyph torch tile under the QS panel which can be used as a glyph flash for video shooting. 4K shooting has a complete black screen for shooted videos. Slow motion shooting also has the same issue. Under mode setting who gets the time lapse recording and it's working. Panorama mode, macro mode, expert mode all are working very good. There are no any issues regarding these options. Still camera has some major issues like no portrait pictures, slow motion and 4K recording which must be fixed. So we discussed all the major timestamps of the video, now let's start with the review of some amazing customization features. I will only show you some unique customizations to avoid the lengthy video. ROM has dedicated option for customizations called as alphabet. In this all the features are well distinguished in the different tabs like user interface, status bar, QS setting etc as per the nature of customizations. 
Under user interface, in the ambient display setting, who gets the ambient text on the ambient display, who can change its color, size and position. Who also gets the ambient image toggle for ambient display. If you enable this, who can set any picture on the ambient display. But always use the AMOLED black wallpapers to avoid the heavy battery drain. Here you can see with the ambient text and with the AMOLED wallpaper, lock screen gets next level of look which is amazing. But always use the minimal AMOLED wallpaper to avoid the battery drain because this will cause heavy battery drain. Who also gets the smart pixel to disable some pixels of the display with the permanent protection. This will specially helps to prolong the battery of the device during emergency situations like critical low level of battery percentage. Under Monet theming who gets the bunch of different theme styles and UI styles. For UI styles who specially gets the Sishu Illusion style which applies this new wallpaper to the background of setting. Similarly, Sishu Nights will apply currently running wallpaper as setting background. Both of these gives amazing look to the settings panel. ROM also provides this new UI style setting which has different setups like AOSP, DOT and NAD. NAD and DOT type of UI has some big card like setting panel. While AOSP will apply the clean AOSP like settings panel look. Except this ROM has all the bunch of features like now bar styles, font styles, signal icon styles, Wi-Fi icons, app drawer icons, etc. Under the QS setting, we get the bunch of different styles for the brightness slider. This is a unique feature available in the ROM. It's not available for any other ROM. These are some of amazing looking styles for the brightness slider. Similarly, who gets the bunch of different header image styles for the QS panel. These are some of the header image styles. Another new unique feature who gets is the new QS panel transition animations. This will give something different feeling while swiping between tiles of the QS panel. Under the lock screen, who gets the different clock font styles for the lock screen. Instead of this, we also get the double line clock position and size slider control, but it's not working for now. It's not changing the size and the position of double line clock. Maybe it's the bug. In the under display fingerprint customization, we get the bunch of different under display fingerprint icons and their animation. But here we again get the one new unique feature that is under display fingerprint press color. We get the six different colors here which will glow while pressing the fingerprint. There is a volume panel style option who gets which has the realme and the rise UI style. Under the miscellaneous setting who gets the advanced game space, unlock higher pace in the game, Netflix spoofing, etc. I didn't know if the Netflix spoofing and unlock higher FPS toggle are working or not. Who also gets the parallel space sensor per app blockage to improve the battery life, weather setting for weather icons on the home screen and on the lock screen. Pocket detection toggle is also special setting who gets here. Actually, it's available for most of custom ROMs and stock OS, but they didn't have option to control this feature. If you keep the phone in a pocket and accidentally if any hardware button got pressed, this will block the waking up of the screen by blocking the proximity sensor. And this pocket mode screen will pop up on this device. Except this alphabet customization, some other customization features are available under the display setting of the device like live display, display color control, who gets the smooth display toggle to force 120 hz setting. Under the system setting, who gets the all the different screen gesture features like one handed mode, single tap to wake the screen, press and hold power button to enable the Google assistance, etc. So we completed all the timestamps of the video. Now it comes the most important part that is bugs and the issues. As usual, DRM info showing the security level as L3, so we can't able to use Netflix or Amazon Prime services at full HD resolution. It is a common issue for all the custom ROMs but the ROM comes with the Netflix spoofing under miscellaneous setting. I did not know it's working or not because I don't have Netflix paid subscription. Under the lock screen setting, we get the double tap to sleep on the lock screen. But it's not working properly, it's not sleeping the screen, maybe it's conflicting with the single tap wake up. Sometimes it's working but probably most of the time it's not working. Similarly, media cover art is not working. It's not working for any of Android 13 ROM for any type of device. Under the quick setting panel, we get the wireless power share tile but it's not working. 
the only rom till the date has this working feature is pixis os next bug is for the battery level indicator it's not working at all even if you connect the cable to the phone no glyph light blinks at all except these all the camera bugs who led is seen under the camera section of the video instead of these bugs no serious issue are faced or all this new rom is another champ of android world it has decent performance even though it's highly customizable rom it has some unique customizations which were not present in other custom roms battery life is 8 to 10 days i will report it after 2 to 3 days of testing why community post so stay tuned until then if you like our work then please do like and share this video subscribe our channel press the bell icon for the notifications of our upcoming content thanks for watching soon next time take care bye bye